Hello to all my friends out there. Oops. Hi, you guys. We meet again. I hope everyone is doing okay. Okay, this video is Go Primitive, Save Money, The Simple Life is Cheap. So how this came about is I was thinking, you know, I really want to save 30% of my money next month. But I thought, why do that? Why not just go primitive, you know, do what you know to do to save money and save as much money as you possibly can now. Because when I was young, my husband and I made some good progress in five years because there was a terrible recession at that time and nobody had any cash. So what I wanna do is save as much cash as I possibly can. So what do I mean by going uh, primitive? Well, a long time ago, they didn't have any electricity. So you pretty much had to go to bed when it was dark. But what I'm doing is the only electricity I'm using is in this kitchen and it's a little room and I'm gonna continue on. Okay, I go to the gym and back, but I'll get into that in a minute. That doesn't really cost money except for gas. Um, and then I will have stew and bread or biscuits. Now, I was horrified because they said during the um, Great Depression, there was a shortage of biscuits. I go, what? Beans and cornbread. I will make rice pudding because I have a lot of rice, pies, fruit, and custard. And then I will read or watch YouTube. So I want to give you a couple of good recipes. Now this is a good recipe. This is a cobbler recipe. Let me read the instructions first. Melt margarine to the frying point. Of all the recipes women are secretive, this is it. So you but you don't want to burn your butter. Combine to a smooth batter, flour, sugar, milk, and baking powder. That's all that's in it. Just mix it up until it's smooth. Pour hot margarine in a nine by 13 inch baking dish. Pour batter over the margarine, margarine then batter, and add fruit and juice. Bake 375 for 45 minutes until done. As cobbler bakes, the batter rises through fruit, thickening juice, and forming a top crust. Excellent served warm. So in the olden days, they canned the fruit, but I'm buying big cans of fruit. So you need one stick margarine, half cup, one cup flour, stockpile, one cup sugar and the margarine can be butter homemade made by you one cup milk stockpile two teaspoons baking powder stockpile one quart of any fruit undrained there you go i'm giving it up to you guys get this recipe so if you've stored up a bunch of uh of fruit you're in business custard pie my friend used to make this older gentleman a custard pie and he didn't know it but she bought custard <laughs> everything in the stockpile pastry will not soak custard if you follow the directions below Line a greased pie pan with pastry, building up the edges to make it to make it deep enough. Scallop the edges by pressing the edges between thumb and finger to the left hand with the first finger of the right hand. <laughs> to now here it comes to prevent the custard soaking into the pastry. Brush with melted vegetable shortening and dust with flour big secret prepare custard as following beat three eggs until light and add three quarter cup granulated sugar stockpile one half teaspoon salt stockpile one half teaspoon ground nutmeg stockpile 
Beat together thoroughly and add one pint of milk stockpile. Pour into the shell. Bake in hot oven 450 for 10 minutes until the crust begins to brown on the top. Then reduce the heat to 325 until the custard is set about 30 minutes. I cover my um, edges with uh, foil when, it, when it's done. So here you go. So we have rice pudding, we have cobbler, and we have custard. And we have cookies, and we have cake, and we have food. So we can get by. Okay, here is some uh, yeast rolls I made today. These are so good. I use my uh, cobbler. I mean, not my cobbler, my um, whey from when I made cottage cheese. Here's the one I made today. I just drink it. But. It's really good for bread making and biscuit making. Here is the cottage cheese. So I'm trying to eat cottage cheese homemade at night. So I just heat my uh, two cups milk in the, sometimes it makes more, two cups milk in the microwave until it boils. Then I add a quarter cup of uh, vinegar, but you can add less. You can add two, three tablespoons. And then I zap it for a couple minutes and I kind of cover it. And then when it, the whey separates from the, the uh, cottage cheese, I strain it and then I use the whey to make my uh, biscuits. And the reason I like these kind of biscuits is because uh, I like to eat breakfast sandwiches. Well, you guys know, here, see? Here's some good yeast rolls. So, um, let me give you the bread recipe. All right. So I mixed the water, one and one quarter cup water, but I mixed um, about one half cup water, water and then uh, two uh, tablespoons sugar, and then uh, I heated it in the microwave one minute, cooled it until it was like a, a warm bath, and I added a package of yeast and covered it. Then I added the dry ingredients, which was um, um, three and one quarter cup flour and uh, three quarter teaspoon salt. So sometimes I add a quarter cup of um, potato flakes and or a quarter cup of um, of um, raisins, but this time I just used, um, what I did is I added the, on the one and one quarter cup water minus one half cup. I, I made the rest of it, which would be three quarter cup whey. And then, uh, you could still add powdered milk if you want, but I don't see any reason for making this more uh, expensive. Here is the, so uh, always remember if there is some food shortage, you want to make sure you have bread and stew or bread, cornbread and chili. Uh, you can just have canned chili. That is good enough. Okay, soda biscuits, one cup flour, one half teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon soda, all this stuff, one half teaspoon baking powder, one tablespoon lard or shortening or oil, and a half a cup of buttermilk or whey or milk, bake 400. Just add all the dry ingredients, cut in your, um, your shortening or lard and then uh, add your buttermilk little by little. Imagine no biscuits. Okay, Navajo fry bread. I made these for a couple months until I got good at them. Uh, one cup flour, one and one half teaspoon baking powder, one half teaspoon salt, Add one cup hot water. You can add to the uh, dry ingredients a quarter cup of um, 
of uh, powdered milk. Add little by little, add the hot water little by little to make a soft bowl. Put in a bowl with a little oil. So what's your, get a little oil on your uh, dough and let it sit 20 to 30 minutes and then fry in small uh, fry breads. You know, you can use a little uh, flour to make them into some nice little biscuit type. Um, this is a very important recipe. Why we want these other recipes is in case we don't have yeast, like during the pandemic. This is Julia Child's cornbread. One to two eggs. I, I have been making homemade um, sour cream. One half cup can be uh, substituted. One cup milk or whey. One teaspoon salt. Two cups one cup flour one cup cornmeal uh look i use one and one quarter cup of flour and three quarter cup cornmeal or corn flour uh two to four teaspoons melted butter homemade out of your heavy cream two to four teaspoons sugar and one tablespoon baking powder so it's the same same thing you know mix all the dry ingredients and then mix the wet ingredients and then you can add jalapenos and cheese or whatever you want. You can make a loaf or you can make muffins. I usually make muffins. All right. And then I want to give you the Irish soda bread recipe. This is a baking soda bread. Um, two cups unsifted all-purpose flour. Two tablespoons sugar. All this stuff is in your stockpile. One teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, one half teaspoon salt, three tablespoons butter or softened margarine, one half cup uh, raisins, one cup buttermilk or whey, and one tablespoon butter uh, or shortening melted to put on the top. So get this one. Well, I'll show, I'll, I'll go up this way so you can see the whole thing, but once you learn how to make uh, uh, soda bread, good soda bread, uh, and you can buy a big uh, pot, a big tub of soda, and then, uh, so I have my biscuits, I mean my bread, I have my homemade cottage cheese, and then I made lemon chicken. Mostly I made this for tomorrow because uh, when I come home from the gym, if I don't have food ready, bad things happen. So all I did was I melted a little butter and a little oil in my baking dish. And then I put garlic salt, uh, um, black pepper, and and. I put lemon, lemon pepper. I dusted my um, chicken 350 and I just baked it in the oven, turning halfway. Okay, now, so um, there's four days left to this month. I'm probably eating every day out of the stockpile, but I might not. So, um, if I go these four last days and six days, the first six days of the month, right there is my 30% of the month. So that's probably what I'm going to do, just being really, really cheap for these next 10 days. Homemade cottage cheese, whey, homemade bread, butter, peanut butter. And back in the day, we used to eat a lot of eggs, homemade bread, bread and butter, and bacon and sausage. And then grow food year-round cooking and preserving. So I'll be doing that. I want to give you Homestead Tessie's brine. Um, so you can make pickles. Okay, what I do is, say if it's cucumbers, but it can be bell peppers. It can be, um, it can be, uh, I would blanch, um, cauliflower or um 
zucchini just in boiling water for a minute or two and then plunge in cold water. So then you just put it in a bowl. I peel most of my uh, skin off the cucumbers and then I put sliced onion and coarse salt. So the brine is two cups sugar, two cups vinegar, four cups water, and two teaspoons salt. Boil and then pour it over your vegetables that have been sitting about 10 or 20 minutes in the coarse salt. And then just put it in a, a bowl and I mean, you can water bath can them or you can just put them in a jar and have refrigerator pickles. That's what's good about this uh, way is you're getting um, you're getting some good um, you're getting some good uh, vinegar to protect you from bacteria. In the day when Alexander the Great protected his army, it was half and half, half water. Well, it was better a lot of times in war. The disease after kills you. Okay, in Europe. They're stocking up on salmon, uh, debone and chop, onion, one egg, two slices of bread, salt, pepper, garlic, and two tablespoons mayo. And you can also use your homemade um, sour cream or cream cheese and make uh, balls like meatballs and bake. Uh, they have frying oil, but I bake everything. So that is a good thing. Okay, now we'll get into that in a minute so this month we're going primitive and i will be going primitive and so you guys will be along okay today i cannot believe this i thought how can you be so retarded okay i was studying rosa crucia ism and uh i can understand it because i was studying the secret doctrine like madame blavatsky for months and anyway so um it's actually a, a lot of it is spiritualism so like the christians go well that's not really a good idea because the spirits could be misleading so i was still listening to it and i i thought well just listen to it and take what you like and leave the rest so they talk about you're trying to regain your memory of your past lives because they believe in reincarnation but the devils have been around for thousands of years but what they said is try to be mindful of what you're doing because you're like asleep and i thought that is so true because i have no memories of like my whole life like when i think about doing hair and nobody did more hair than i did it is a blur i have like no memory hardly of it so i thought well yeah let me see if i can do that so i'm driving to the gym i stopped by to get a coke i haven't been able to sleep for a month i've had hives and nothing helps them. And I thought it was my face cream. I thought it was the dial soap. I thought it was the hair color. So I'm drinking the Coke and I'm mindful and I, I feel hives popping out on my eyeballs, in my ears, on the sides of my face, on my neck. I had a rash on my back. I go, I'll be damned. This is an allergic reaction. I am lucky. You guys, I am lucky I didn't have some severe allergic attack because I have had one before and they're very, they're very, very dangerous when it gets to the point where you're having those, I mean, I had hives on my eyeballs. So um, I was also, uh, I had a drinking prog problem and they said allergy to alcohol, but I could never really see that. I mean, I, I couldn't accept, you know, drinking too much, but in this case, I still have a little bit of hives on my <laughs> scalp. And then like I had really bad insomnia. You guys probably noticed how bad I um, look. And I thought I wouldn't dare drink that stuff after I still have hives I mean, I can feel them, but they're a lot better than they were. 
and the Benadryl didn't work either. I'm still not sure if it was a combination of things, but just by being open-minded, I say myself, I was laughing, I said to my son, I push every ha habit to the limit. So uh, that is what happened. And I'm finding this, uh, so one of the things I'm gonna be doing when I get going primitive is I'm gonna be reading books. So this book is A Pictorial History of the Confederacy. So I try to, um, to find historical books, but what's nice is here is a picture of Abraham Lincoln. So these, this book was 1961, so you figure it's about 60 years old. And my ex-husband's side fought for the Confederacy. And so this is really um, interesting. And so um, we have a story. The war was over. The guy who is related to my ex-husband was standing in the front yard. A Union sh soldier, they said he was a bushwhacker, shot him dead in front of the little kids. One of the little boys, and I, like when I heard the story, I go, this is exactly like my ex-husband. The little boy grows up, finds a guy, and shoots him in the back in, in church. So, you know, these, these people who want to want to cause a civil war that is not a good idea there's grizzly uh photos actual photos of the war in there too so i will be reading oh also i gotta what was this oh no that never mind that okay so i will be reading uh, i enjoy reading so that will be no problem Okay, I want to go to the casino. Tuesday is senior day. I met this nice lady at the gym who works in, is a chef. I want to go eat at the Chinese restaurant up there. So I want to start doing that. So, um, so now you guys saw I bought sandwiches. So I have cereal and milk peanut butter, cheese, and crackers, and soup. And so I want to um, mention everything, every something, everything has a duration, like your lifespan. So here I am going to the gym, forcing myself to work out, and I'm coming home and damn near killing myself. But I know if I want to survive, I have to keep my muscles strong enough to pump my blood, you know, up to my brain. So, um, I just wanted to mention after 45 minutes of walking on the tr treadmill, I burned 43 calories. <laughs> so, you know, they try to tell us, oh, it's mostly, um, it's mostly diet. So I am working on that. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit about stockpiling. And so last month, if you notice, I stockpiled a lot of nuts so I could make nut milk and dry fruit. So this month I want to stockpile meat and milk so I can make cottage cheese and whey. And so um, today I bought uh, two cans of this yellowfin tuna because after I get home from the gym, I eat a fish maybe only once a week but if you're just going to eat it straight out of the can, this good uh, fish is better. And then I bought two of these Walmart Spams uh, for $2.18. And the thing about this is November 28 and November 26. So what I want to do is buy, buy food with a long... So I bought uh, two cans of salmon and two, two uh, cans of tuna because you really have to have nuts and fish to stay healthy. And then I have the, the rice I bought at Dollar Tree. Probably this week I'll buy ten more dollars worth of food at Dollar Tree. That really worked out good. I have most of it left. And then I bought two big cans of um, pickled vegetables. Or you can make your own. So you have your sandwich, 
you have your vegetables or your fruit, you make your rice pudding, you, and so um, always keep stockpiling a little bit all the time. Okay, so um, I'll be stockpiling uh, meat and milk. So um, I will just give you a little shot of the meals that I came up with with the spam and the tuna. Nothing exceptional. This is just what I usually do with it. Okay, so like you might be thinking, well, like if we're so broke, you know, we have to have some fish and some nuts. What are we going to do? Well, seaweed, tofu, and banana blossom, uh, that is not really going to work. Um, you just need about one portion per week. And then uh, also, I'm going to be stockpiling some more coconut. So if you make some kind of fruit salad out of a uh, fruit cocktail, you have some coconut and maybe some raisins and nuts. It says only one third of Americans in America eat nuts. And you only need one point five ounces or three tablespoons for uh, a serving. So you don't really need that much to keep you uh, healthy. And if you buy those big bags of nuts, three tablespoons goes forever. Okay, um, so um, then it's the same with rice. You need three tablespoons. Okay, today, since you know I have to be a little bit good, I bought a big tea, half and half light. So these are uh, 2 dollars but after I drink this, I will make um, sun tea. The way I make it is um, three tea bags and fresh mint, which I'm growing. Here's my mint. I, I, they grow big fast. And uh, two cups of water for our two cups water. So you put the three tea bags in the two cups of cold water and then add four cups of boiling water let seep 10 minutes and cover remove tea bags and mint one cup sugar lemon three cups cold water and add more mint so this is for sweet tea but um you can also make it one cup um one cup cold water and put your black tea bags and then put um, three cups boiling water. So I usually use about two. So you have your tea bags in the water first. That's how you can make good brewed tea. Okay, for lemonade, one half cup lemon or lime. So I have half and half here. One half cup sugar and three cups water to make lemonade. Mint tea, mint tea, pinch of cinnamon, honey, and lemon to taste. And also mint tea is good with coffee, coffee, uh, hazelnut coffee creamer, hot mint tea. So I bought this today. For stockpiling milk, I prefer whole milk from a Walmart. That's about $14. Um, and this, this is Dollar Tree black tea. I find this to be good. It was $1.25. So I will probably buy another $10. Okay, now, so um, that tea is 16 cups. Okay, think about this. I will be buying potato chips because that's like storing potatoes in a tasty way. And then I have my homemade sour cream and onion soup so I can make dips to go with my sandwiches. Bean dip. I will be buying Frito-Lay bean dip because if you're going to eat bean dip, you know, and, and Fritos, that is tasty. Hummus, the serving size is two tablespoons. Peanut butter, the serving size is two tablespoons. I was watching bodybuilders and they eat like a half a cup. I mean a half a jar of peanut butter with a spoon. I thought, how much peanut butter are we supposed to be eating? Two tablespoons. Uh, butter, serving size, one uh, tablespoon. Sour cream is one, sour cream substituted for egg is one half cup. 
Um, okay, I want to mention about the more vegetable things. I was watching a lot of vegetarian. Um, this tea is good. Vegetarian. And they eat a lot of fruit. And I thought, no, I don't want to. I, I am going to eat more veggies, but not more fruit. Not a lot of fruit. I, I mean, I'm talking a lot of fruit, you guys. Like, uh, mostly like in smoothies and, um, you know, various uh, fruit. I don't want to add more sugar. Right now, I'm not, I'm not worrying too much. Look, here's my little indoor garden. It's coming along pretty nice. I will plant my outdoor garden and I will show you as soon as I get around to it. Okay, so I, I gave you guys a lot of good um, recipes. I also wanted to mention if you're going to eat rice and beans regularly, which I am trying, if you have rice, beans, and potatoes, and then like a couple vegetables, small piles, then you're getting a variety of food, not like a lot of, I want to mention something. I know some of you were wondering, so I want to show you what did I do with it. So today I had mangoes. So here's my leftover mangoes. Sometimes I just keep them in the, in the refrigerator. And then I had uh, tuna. And then I had a third cup rice with coconut milk um sugar and mangoes on the top so um so if you're going to eat rice beans and potatoes if you stockpile four cans of beans that is enough a can of beans when you're just eating a little bit is enough for a week so i wanted to mention that also you know if you have your canned beans and you have made homemade sour cream then you can make the sour, uh, the seven layer dip. The seven layer dip is expensive, which is ridiculous. And so you have your beans, you have your sour cream, you have your salsa, you have your cheese, you have your tomatoes, you have your onions, and you have your uh, lettuce or whatever you want to put on it. Okay, and then as for the pickled vegetables, uh, the two jars, I mentioned yesterday, but maybe you didn't see the video. This is enough pickled vegetables for a month, 30 servings. So this is a good way. And then if you have your homemade cottage cheese, you can put your, I, I like to eat homemade cottage cheese with uh, tomatoes. But you can put fruit, you know, canned fruit as well. Okay, and then... Um, I will be making some hummus, so I have stockpiled some chickpeas, but also chickpeas are good for, um, if you're going to go more veggie, if you put uh, chickpeas in your pasta salad and you put them in things, that ups your um, protein. Also, the big, um, I will be buying some of the big mushrooms and you could cut them up and use them just like meat. I mean, we all know the vegetarian stuff, but maybe we just haven't been doing it. So, okay, back to the real quick, back to the primitive way of life, food. No, house, you got a house. Remember a little house on the prairie? A water and food, gasoline, utilities and clothes. And then combat consumerism simply by buying what you need and that is all. So today I had to buy bird food and I told you yesterday I went three places and I couldn't buy bird food. So I bought um, two bags of three different things which was almost $30. So like you go to get some, they don't have it, you have to buy a lot and so you're spending more money. So, um, think about the recession and say to yourself, do I think the recession is the U.S. only 
or do I think the recession is worldwide? Well, I'm pretty sure that it is uh, worldwide and that it is a lot worse than we know, but we can still prosper by guarding our money with our lives. And then that way, if something comes up, like you have to buy bird food or, you know, whatever it is, uh, you are fine. Um, back to that, everything has a duration. Okay, after many years, right now I live in a really nice place. I have everything I could possibly need. I mean, I don't have to buy food for maybe two years, maybe longer. So everything has a duration. I mean, I could have destroyed my health or I could have had some kind of uh, terrible reaction to that, to those hives because I've had one before. So I know how dangerous they are. So anyway, you guys, that is that. I will see you tomorrow. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all. Bye.